Hi everyone! I decided to use the Wild Unknown Tarot deck for this mini tarot reading because um, I previously used it, I think only once, for a two minute tarot video. Um, but I meant to actually use it more um, and to kind of mix it up with the Rider weight, and I probably will do some with the Shadowscapes deck as well. Um, I'm still very much getting to grips with the Wild Unknown. I've had it for quite a while now um, and I'm definitely more comfortable with it now than I was um, at the outset. But I haven't had a huge amount of time to spend, you know, as much quality time with it as I would like. So I'm kind of taking any opportunity I get to play around with the cards and um, yeah, have a go at doing readings uh, with them. So the two cards that I've chosen at random for today um, are the Ten of Swords and um, in this deck it's called the Daughter of Swords. Uh, this would ordinarily be the Page of Swords. Um, so straight away you, we're seeing quite um, a contrast between these two cards. Um, we're seeing in the Ten of Swords a very sort of heavy, grounded, earthy kind of feeling and then here with the Daughter of Swords uh, we have um, a very sort of, it's a more, well almost kind of cosmic, it's up in the air and um, the owl even seems to be I mean it is sort of perched on the sword but it's floating she is kind of floating in space so there is this more sort of esoteric maybe of the mind kind of um, higher chakras kind of feel to this card and there is a feeling of maybe space um, and freedom so um, these cards obviously qualify each other in, a, in quite an interesting way because they are um, so different. Ordinarily, uh, the Ten of Swords obviously is quite, it's a bit of a card of doom and gloom. It can be seen as one of those scary cards that people don't really like to see coming up in a spread um, and it is comparable, often compared to uh, the Death card. Um, so the Ten of Swords I would ordinarily see as, as similar to the Death card in being sort of um, referring to some sort of ending or the end of a cycle, that kind of thing. Um, often to do though with um, patterns or cycles of the mind, so patterns of thought and things like that. Um, the Ten of Swords for me often suggests um, not only that there is an end coming about, but that this end is absolutely necessary, that it is, it's beyond necessary. It's, um, you know, it's been on the cards for, for quite some time if you'll excuse the accidental pun. Um, and it's in this card as well as in the Rider Waite and most other Ten of Sword cards that I have seen, there is this sense of light on the horizon because we have this dark and the death and the gloom down here, but we have this light kind of coming in from above. So we do have this sense of, of the dawning of a new day after the end of a cycle. I generally associate the suit of swords with um, not only the mind and the intellect, and communication and things like that, and um, but also with the will. The suit of wands is all about manifesting that will and taking action and actually creating something or um, yeah, putting something out into the world and taking taking steps, I suppose. Um, whereas in the suit of swords, we see more sort of the the onset of ideas and the formation of of your will and the development of those things that you will then act on. In the suit of wands. Um, all of this kind of has to happen in, in the mind first before we can make it, before we can make it physical, before we can manifest it. We have to know what it is that we want, we have to know what it is that we're aiming for. Um, so that's definitely worth bearing in mind any time that we see cards coming up um, from the suit of swords. Um, so here we have, um, like I said, in the, in the ten of swords, um, a feeling of an ending, an ending of um, maybe a pattern or um, a cycle of thinking or a way of thinking or even an idea. Um, but it could also be uh, something about a restriction of the will or um, a need for um, a new avenue, a, a new direction to impose that will, a new, a new way to go. Um, that something isn't working and needs to be completely abandoned and um, started afresh. Um, so then we have the Daughter of Swords. So combined with the Daughter of Swords, um, I would actually see this as a very kind of positive card um, and definitely more suggestive of the sort of new dawn, new day kind of feel to it. Because the Daughter of Swords is all about beginnings and freshness and a new thought, running with a new thought, the excitement of having that new idea um, that you are wanting to focus on and run with, that it really excites you. 
Um, so combined, obviously the two of them, like I said, have a very, very different kind of, of feel to them. Um, so I do feel that they, they qualify each other in this sense. And like I say, the Daughter of Swords gives um, the Ten of Swords a sort of a hopeful feeling um, that, you know, don't get bogged down in the, the sort of the detail and, and the sadness and the pain of perhaps having to give up something that you thought you wanted. Um, rather, focus on this new idea or new thing. Focus on the, on the door that is opening rather than the door that is closing. Um, but also I think that maybe the Daughter of Swords here has been qualified by the Ten of Swords and saying um, not to rush into things and um, not to get ahead of yourself and not to be impatient because um, the Daughter of Swords is very definitely a card, um, it's, it's sort of like the aces, it's, it's like the seed. Um, there is a new thought, there is something that can be moved forward with, there's a new avenue to go down, there's something new opening up um, and possibly something in the mind, some new learning that can be done, something that can be learnt, um, whether that is sort of academic or um, whether it's just something about yourself that needs to be learnt or something about life in general. Um, but there's also this sense that, um, yeah, you can't, you can't really run away with yourself. <laughs> um, you're at the beginning stages and you need to go through that process. Um, you, can't force, you can't force the issue. Um, you, can't, you can't basically jump the gun. And I def very definitely feel that the Ten of Swords takes, um, uh, really draws out this message from the Daughter of Swords um, because it is reminding us that with every new beginning there is an ending. It's, it, not, it doesn't only work that with every ending there is a beginning, it also is true that every time there is a beginning there is an ending because there's only so much that we can have going on in our lives at any one time. There is generally only so much energy that we have or only so many people that we can really devote time to in our lives and all that kind of thing. So generally when a door opens it does mean that there is another door closing and the Ten of Swords remind, reminds us to respect that and respect that there may be some pain and discomfort in releasing um, those old thought patterns or old ideas and letting in the new. And also just reminding you, you know, not to let yourself get bogged down by those old patterns or old thoughts or old ideas. Um, that maybe it is time to release them so that we can follow that new spark of the Daughter of Swords. If you're enjoying this series then don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up with them all um, and if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter yet I send out uh, weekly updates with my blog and YouTube content and I also send a monthly exclusive article uh, which I send out at around the dark moon and so if you're interested in receiving that click the link below uh, in the description box and you can sign up. Thanks for watching guys and um, talk to you again soon.